call to order. Well, I just did that. Roll call. Erica, you want to do that? Yes. Um, we have Tom DeVee. Yep. Uh, Arlene Zortman. Yes. Jean Christopher. Yes. Lauren Seeley. Yep. Her, um, Molly O'Donnell. Here. Lisa Gallinor. Here. Kendra Daniels. Here. And Tracy DeFrancesco. Here. All right, number two on the agenda, approval of minutes from August 16th, 2022. We have a motion. Do we have any discussion? I just have, I have a question. <clears throat> on number five, which is development and project updates under Christmas, it's just, I need to understand this in my mind. It says targeted to finish November of 2023, but then it says, We'll get people pre-leased before November of 2024, which is a year later. Is that correct? Oh, uh, it should be probably pre, pre um, leased up probably. So they could be leased up within the year. Okay. Well, no. Pro, uh, I think it should be 2023. Yeah, they should both be 2023. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Because it's going to be finished at the end of November. Yeah. At the end of November. Yeah. November 2023, you'll yeah. lease it up. Okay. Yeah. Any other discussion or changes? All right, with that one change, let's have a vote. Uh, in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Abstain, no. All right, motion passes. All right, number three, public invited to be heard. Nope. See, I'm, I'm just watching. <laughs> you always, you always get it. You always get it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's let's. It's my breath that you weren't going to back out. We're, we're gonna, we're gonna move uh, six A and B. <laughs> oh man, I got a headache. Right <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's move on to six A and B um, items for input for the LHA Board of Commissioners or for the Board of Commissioners HCB admin plan. So um, every year we um, are, well, we used to every year update the admin plan to incorporate regulatory changes and policy changes. Um, the policy that we're operating under right now is the 2017 admin plan. There's been a lot of changes. So this just updates the re regulatory changes and then some, some changes in policy. Um, the Housing Authority can make um, policy decisions at certain places in the admin plan. And so um, we've made minor changes, a couple of significant changes with the policies. Um, the first policy, major policy, is how we handle um, requests for adding additional people into the household. We are finding that um, we're, we're, we'll house an elderly person and all of a sudden her their their daughter and grandkids are there. So then we have to up the the voucher size, the amounts that we subsidize go up. So the changes um, kind of go through who we will allow to move in and if it affects the the voucher size. So that was a significant um, change. Regulatory change was um, virtual um, pre briefings due to COVID. So that's all been um, implemented into it. And we use Nan McKay's um, admin plan, which is a really good admin plan. And we just insert our policies as, as needed and when required. Can we back up just a minute to sure. what you talked about before? Are you limiting how many people are going, can actually get in, or are you allowing the people to? So, so there are certain people that we will allow to move in. Um, we will allow uh, a living aid. That yeah. What we're finding is living aid is the daughter, mm -hmm. and the daughter has a husband and, yeah. and children. Mm -hmm. um, and so this kind of limits that we will give a bedroom for the, the live-in aid, which is a regulatory requirement, but um, we will not increase the, the bedroom size to accommodate the, the children, which means that if it overcrowds the unit, they can't, they can't move those individuals in. Um, foster care, when we approve the, the the new, the new children moving in. Mm -hmm. 
if it overcrowds the, the voucher, we won't allow it. And before, we were, they were allowing those people to move in and increasing the voucher size. Okay. And so this kind of, and um, we won't deny them um, for grandkids, for um, a spouse or a significant other. That's another change. Um, significant others. So a lot of people are moving in boyfriends or girlfriends, mm -hmm. and then they move out, and then another boyfriend or girlfriend. So we've <laughs> we've, <laughs> we've limited it to um, a spouse or a significant other. And in Colorado, significant other is um, or domestic, domestic partner. partner. Yeah. 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 Um, there's paperwork. There's so paperwork. That. So they'll have to they'll have to verify that they're a domestic partner before we will allow them to to join the family. Because um, if they're moving in more people and you're expanding voucher sizes and subsidies, you're taking away from another family who can use a voucher. That's correct, and and we're not here to subsidize the whole generation of of, of people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so it just kind of tightens up that that area. So the, I know the question has come up before, I think, at, at council meetings about what are we doing to accommodate those children that are aging out of foster care? Are we doing something? You know, we haven't that? had an, we haven't had any requests, requests okay. for for that. Um, since I've I've been here, I don't think that's that's an issue, <laughs> and that's something that we would look at at the time. Um, and there are specific vouchers for kids aging out of foster care. There's a yeah. there's there's a program. Okay. Um, there's help for. Her. And they get a uh, what is it called a person to guide you through this process. Yeah, they get like a caseworker. Case well, we don't. Yeah, yeah. we and don't. Yeah. White Tech even has provisions for those yeah. Yeah. who's aged out within five years. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I will also just mention this is not related to the vouchers necessarily, maybe, but. Um, so we have the element properties has the purchase option for the rest of the land around the suites um, outside of what's going to be Zinnia, which is we'll figure out in a second with our development updates. Um, but they're very preliminarily talking to Elvair about which used to be attention homes about maybe having a section or a smaller building that is focused on youth. So maybe those aging out of foster care, maybe youth experiencing homelessness, something like that. They're, it's very preliminary, but they're in talks about the opportunities there. So like a boarding house, maybe foster care, so no good. Well, it could be tied to a voucher, the uh, foster kids voucher program. It could be tied, I mean, Elder has a whole whole arm of this. Um, so we don't, we don't have specific vouchers for um, kids going out of foster care. Um, it, but, I went to a grand opening for Maker Housing, and they had yeah, a couple for there are some kids' um, caraway homes, mm -hmm. and it seemed to me like it's not as it's not a huge mm -hmm. need right. um, where we need like an entire you know neighborhood or development right. focused on it, but right. it is something we can offer, um, and we do have we have a lot of community partners who can let us know as things change, mm -hmm. but yeah, that would be nice to have something. Like Can't think. Those were the those were the biggest changes. So we struggled with how to present this because the admin plan. How many pages do you think the admin plan is? Oh, thousands. thousands. <laughs> and it hasn't been updated in six, five years. Five years. So yeah, the idea is. To, so we tried it. This is um, what Tracy put together. Is really just a bullet summary of the major changes, and then there's track changes for days. Um, it really yeah. is just trying to get things up to date and then going forward, we're going to make this effect. So this would go to the LHA board October 18th to make it effective January 1st. And then we want to do this every year, which would be smaller, <laughs> not as such of a lift, um, easier to explain what kind of changes are coming. Yeah. And, and the more I thought about January 1st, if we can get it probably November 1st and just do it every November. Um, because there's so many changes that that we need to implement it as soon as we can, um, especially okay. the family stuff. Uh, there's 
there's lots of little little things, um, but there's a lot of like remote bridgings and, and stuff, and those are all regulatory. Mm -hmm. So I got a question on the, the, the HQS inspections. Uh, you can do them remotely through video streaming. Is it just if it's a remote location, or if we have COVID again, can we do we can implement do that. that as well? Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. That we and and our policy is that we don't do that. Yeah. Right now, but yeah. if that ever changes, we can change it to, to doing it more. Yeah, I mean it, it's a kind of a backup. The right. preferred method is right. is being there live and yeah. seeing it all. Okay. All right. Something else that we're exploring. Speaking of HQS. Um, you know, one, one part of compliance that we've had a complaint about at BCHA is, is the number of inspections units have to go through and the number of times residents are bothered by the LIHTC wants to do an inspection of your unit, the um, home consortium wants to do an inspection of your unit, HQS for the voucher program has to do an inspection, so it would be nice if we could get everyone to agree to accept one inspection done by one of these people right and and HUD allows that um, and that's mm -hmm. in our policy that we will accept other agencies mm -hmm. inspection um, but not, not necessarily that, our partners right like funding partners well well it used to be because um, if Chapa did an inspection when Boston Capital came in mm -hmm. and Chapa had done it they were fine right and it's been done and, and as long as we passed it, they were fine. Yeah, yeah. And, the, and in the policy, it might depend on the investor too. Yeah. yeah. And in the policy, yeah. it's, it does say that we'll accept mm -hmm. their their inspection, and that will we pay a consultant to do our inspections, and that will eliminate a lot of. If we can out. get, if we can convince. Everybody else to accept That's ours. Accept yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or yeah. even the, just the HQS ones are very thorough. Yes. Right. I mean, yeah. if the yeah. Light plate isn't screwed on properly, mm -hmm. you fail. So, right. if they will accept those, that then that's good. But yeah, that's one thing that that we're struggling with is trying to get all the folks to the guidance to come down from the federal government to say, hey, right. everyone should just take these inspections and mm -hmm. be good. So hopefully that will happen. Yeah, it's building credibility. Yeah, yeah, they need they need to build credibility, and it'd be good. So something else I wanted to mention on this is we've been talking recently about where we are with the HCB program because we've been fully staffed um, and we have a new compliance manager. She's been here for six months now doing this focus work. Um, we really are in a place where a lot of voucher holders have been used to a certain type of, I don't want to say treatment, because it's really just processing, the way their files are processed. Leniency. Yes, leniency. <laughs> and we are tightening things up to make sure that we don't get in trouble and they don't get in trouble. And we are getting a lot of calls and complaints right now about that. Um, almost all of it, or all of it, it really ties to that right now. So if you all get any calls, if you hear about issues, it I, I can provide some examples but really it's um, tightening up procedures yeah. okay. is, yeah. it, it's for the best, it's what we're in this wave, right? Where people are like, but what it used to be they've done this way, and mm -hmm. it should, once people, you know, it should be a wave, but yeah. we're in it. The complaints <laughs> I've gotten were, oh, well, you know, it, it started exactly like what well, used to be, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I didn't mm -hmm. know that you were going through all this, so... But I was, you know, there's got to be a reason, right. you know, blah, blah, you know, and I, um, and uh, some of it has been complaints about repetition, like yeah, I did that, and now I got to do it again, kind of thing. So it's probably follow up on the original documentation or whatever. So yeah, I, as long as I, yeah, I can appease some of that, right? You know. So, <laughs> so there, yeah, there's a there's a lot of things. We're I've got four files on my desk with unreported income. So we're 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 finding uh -huh. um, we're finding a lot of stuff yeah. that just wasn't paid attention to. Yeah, and so um, we're we've entered into a lot of promissory notes for for back payments. We've um, were they were allowing people. Uh, 
um, reasonable accommodations when they weren't disabled. Um, so those are those are the types of things that we're kind of tightening up on, and it's not making some people happy. And yeah. um, in LIHTC, um, when when there was a project based voucher, we would normally supply LIHTC the information, and now they're having to do it. Again, through yeah. light tech, and that's where that's where yeah. the confusion is is coming. Right, um, they have to renew with us. They have to renew with the light yeah. tech well, and the Ad Aspen Meadows with the recent mm -hmm. we get, it's going to be triple. Yeah. yeah, we are finding potential fraud too. And I'm doing this. Not surprised. Mm -hmm. And not surprised. We say potential. We're quite sure, but we just you know, we have well, to take certain steps yeah. to make it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and we're we're including the police in in those. And we're saying, uh, and when you say potential fraud, it's on the part of the, the tenant. Yeah. Yeah. So that's also that's that. Okay. Well, I have one other question too. So on the the criminal conviction of records after admission, how does that work? Because we we have something on our application, right? That it asks if they have any felonies or anything like that on their record. So if this comes to light after the fact, so that's how does that work? that's if they committed a crime after they were housed. Okay, I thought, yeah, okay. so that's right. so we can't. There's, not, there's regulations. That, yeah, well, no. My, my concern was like they had certified earlier that they didn't have any convictions or they had disclosed their convictions, and then we find out later that they did have something and they lied to us. So this is like we admitted them. They have a unit, and then they committed right. something. Right. So we, can't, right. we do a background check mm -hmm. on on right. everybody before right. we yeah. we house them. HUD is getting pretty um, getting involved in in that. Mm -hmm. They yeah. they find that by doing that, it is discriminating against certain mm -hmm. cultures. Right. And so, if we find that most of the people that are being Denied or uh, you know Hispanic, mm -hmm. then we need to look at our policies again. Right. But that's not what is happening right, okay. right now. But mm -hmm. but they're focused on that. So if they move in and then they've committed something after they've moved in, are they required to report that? No. So you wouldn't know. We wouldn't know unless the um, landlord has contacted us that a person has been arrested um, for drug. You know, if it's if it's for drug related activity um, or a violent activity on the property, then we can um, terminate their vouchers, and we have done that um, in the past. Mm -hmm. But that's that's when we were notified. Yeah, we don't we don't do we background don't. checks at recertification, for example. Yeah, that's costly. Yeah. 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 Anything else on the admin plan? If you want more, if you want to see, <laughs> if you want to see this, it's online. It's online. You can go. Yeah, it's, it's online. online. Yeah. Yeah. Of it is literally like twenty word documents strung together, and that's what an admin plan is. Which kind of blew my mind. Uh, yeah, and it's it's policy changes and regulatory changes, so you can go online and and get that really because it's out for public review right now. So those are available. Is that right? Those are That's, available. Yes, okay. that, that should. Well, it's on the Housing Authority's website. It should be today. I I sent it to Erica yesterday, so it should be today. She's on it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So, how much feedback do you normally get on a public review like that? Well, the last one was five years ago, so I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah. um, Probably not very much. Not very yeah. much. It's really it's really technical. It's very much regulatory reading. Um, and then it's in this horrible format. So, yeah, and I'm I'm updating the admin plan to include all of these, and we'll put that online. That's just a big endeavor. So I I don't <laughs> suspect that it will be online until Friday. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you want some reading, it's very informative. <laughs> But having access to that for when somebody calls, um, because it goes over all of the regulations. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, so.
So, so if you ever have a question, and it's indexed so you can get to the answer right away. Oh no! Control F. Four hundred instances. Control myself. Where was that? All right, let's go on to item B, consideration of stability voucher program. So we have received um, information that some funding is coming down for stability vouchers, and we've kind of looked into it. If we were to apply for the stability vouchers, it's for, um, it gives, it's for homeless individuals or families, um, or almost, or almost homeless families. Um, we would probably get maybe five, and it requires a whole lot of um, counseling. Mm -hmm. um, it's like a permanently supportive voucher. It, it, it is. Yeah. And there's really not, I've been going back and forth with, um, I think it's Boulder County, and they have indicated that, that the continuum of care piece of it that you have to, to um, partner with does not do the um, counseling. Mm. And so we would have to find that they don't get all the funding. There is funding available mm -hmm. under this, but other nonprofits apply for it and get it too. So we would have to locate um, somebody to do the case management. On, on these vouchers. To do it in capacity and, and have the funds. Yeah, and have the, that has the funds to do it. They also eliminated um, the requirement that you do not house people with drug-related activity. So you can't deny somebody that has um, a criminal background. Drug-related, or if they're still doing, doing drugs, the, the um, so, for instance, somebody that moves out of um, LHA's property that has caused a lot of meth da damage, they would still be able to be housed as, as long as there was case management with them. Um, so if they owe a housing authority, you'd still have to, to consider them. Um, if they have a criminal background check or criminal background record um, in drug-related activities, you can't deny them for that. It's just something that I don't think we're in a position right now to take on. We don't have the, the staff capacity. The funds. Or the, or the funds. funds. Community yeah. partners. Yeah. yeah. We, we don't have that. And, and if we were going to, if there was possibility of getting a lot of vouchers, we might want to, you know, look into to, to getting those partners. Mm -hmm. but yeah. For five, five is not worth no. it. Now, wouldn't it be a better idea to see how it works? Well, other others, and I don't think BCHA is going after those either no. because I've heard the continuum of care piece in Boulder County not great. No, and and that yeah. was my email <clears throat> that um, mm -hmm. yeah, that they they can't. They if somebody would commit to um, the the case management. Yeah. then they, they might do that. But mm -hmm. my my biggest concern is putting somebody in there with that that is known to be a drug mm -hmm. user and it has caused damage to another property um, for hundreds of thousands of dollars and we knowingly put those into a private you know I don't I don't think that looks that well with with the private landlord. I also think it would hurt our housing vouchers that were administering. You know, it, uh, the reputation on a housing voucher, uh, it has had a stigma mm -hmm. since it was invented. Mm -hmm. um, and to add this to it, and uh, we're a relatively small town compared to, you know, Denver and, you know, what have you. Um, I I think, I, I agree with you, Tracy, this is this is not the time. And they don't have the, the mechanism in place to really make it work. Because we're talking about people that are not going to get consequences for past behavior. So why are they thinking they're going to get consequences now? When, if you, and, and that sets 
that that goes in antithesis to society, to having society work. And I I would love to see a program helping them, but not at not at the cost of um, the Section Eight program. It, 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 it should be a separate entity. The, the whole idea behind this, from what I've read, is that HUD has um, determined that getting homeless off the street and into housing is the first step to, to um, getting their addictions um, taken care of. But I don't think housing providers are in the... No. We... we not as, private landlords. Not private landlords. No. no. Um, and, and if there's no... no full-time case management. This would yeah. be good for someone who wants to run sort of like a PSH slash boarding house, yes. you yeah. know, mm -hmm. to help treatment. people, treatment right. center right. that's right. Yeah. very yeah. closely right. aligned with right. community partners, but we don't have that here. Like right. tribe. And we are not ready to do that. that like the old concept of group home. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. yes, they're going to keep using. They're addicted. They are. It's right. understood. Yeah. But also... Yeah. Oh, yeah, not in a private landlord's home because they're going to have to deal with the consequences. So the reason we brought this to you is, first of all, we want you to know that even if we haven't jumped on all of the voucher opportunities out there, we want to vet that and why. And for specifically for this one and a lot of others, you have to have board approval to apply. And so we would want your input if we were going to take it to the board. Right now, we're thinking. Yeah, we're not even going to take it to the board. No. Um, I, I mean, I think it's worth bringing to their attention and saying this is an option. We don't recommend it because we're not yeah. prepared financially to do it, but it's something that could be done in the future. If or recommend it to partners. If yeah. the stars align. Yeah, yeah. yeah. or if yeah. they so want to do like an RFP or an SOQ for... Yeah. For organizations to say we would do this if the funding was there, if the support was there, but we can't take it on ourselves. And then to, to request that, get the money, get the vouchers, and then not be able to deliver is going to hurt our overall portfolio, right. too. Right. And um, Boulder Housing Partners, they're, they're administering some from, I think it's the emergency. Okay. It's the same same bucket, bucket. Um, and they they have had um, nothing but issues with the, the support side. Mm -hmm. So without without that component, I. I well, then five vouchers is not much. Yeah, and and I'm not, I'm just saying five because yeah. that's how many vouchers that we were allocated, new vouchers we were allocated. Mm -hmm. So. Um, so maybe yeah. some point in the future, if LHA wanted to accept these vouchers and then partner with somebody like Tribe or somebody who wants to do five, you know, what, like a small five unit or five bedroom or something, um, we could maybe be a pass-through entity and help on the compliance side and they do the services and, and have the people. That could be an option in the future, but we're just not there. We're not there. By November 1st or whenever's the deadline. No, and maybe the... Maybe the program itself will morph as the yeah. feedback comes in. Right, right, right. It seems like it's See if anybody applies. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. It's a great idea in theory, right. mm -hmm. just not in practice. All right, let's go back then up to item number four organizational updates, LHA, the advisory board uh, election schedule update. Okay. There you go. Hey. Hello. Um, so, for the election, we've met with uh, the clerk's office. They are going to help us administer the election, even, but there's some steps we have to take. So, October 18th, we're taking the bylaws to the board to allow for an election at any time of year whenever we need to fill a, a vacancy. Um, and at the same time, there's going to be a couple of other bylaws updates that aren't yet drafted. We have the attorney's office just talking about um, the how, how a board, a commissioner member, can, can resign or be appointed. There's some fine-tuning language that's going to go with that. Um, but assuming we get the bylaws updated October 18th, we're going to be prepped and ready to open the application period October 19th. 
The application period, the recommended one from clerk's office is October 19th to November 30th. Set an interview date with you all some point between December 1st and December 9th. Interviews by the Board of Commissioners on December 10th. That is a that's a set date that they that they have for that. And then appointment during the it's a city council meeting that we would add on a board, LHA board item to appoint on December 13th. So that's the recommended schedule. Um, we have an implementation plan with her where we're gonna make sure we've got our outreach information. Um, we're double checking the application, making sure that new criteria that you all agreed to put in is in there and have that all ready to rock for October 19th. So they would start January 1st then, right? Yes, because these terms we extended through the end of December for Tom and Lauren, so then that, that would make sense. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> October 19th, bye. Yeah. Um, so, and with that, we are going to accept the existing applications that we already received, and we're just gonna have like a one-page addendum that we're gonna request those three applicants, well, Tom, you're one of them, to address that new criteria more specifically. So that's that's the plan, is, it, is everybody good with this? Otherwise, we already have the application written and the criteria, the, the evaluation criteria, so you all would just have to agree to a, um, well, I guess not everyone, because not Tom and Lauren, except for attending, but between Jean and Arlene, um, setting an interview date with the applicants between December 1st and December 9th. Okay. 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 Any questions about that? Otherwise, I'll have everything prepped and ready to go. Sounds good to me. Um, there is one other thing that I'm still waiting for. She's going to line this out for us. Um, it looks like, so we've got two seats that are filled because your, your terms both extend into 2023. Um, we're talking about staggering the terms. So it might be three three-year terms and two two-year terms so that we can get that staggering. So she still, she was gonna line that out for me so we could see it, um, but I, I mean, I haven't got it yet. But that's kind of what we're thinking would make sense. Just so well, as long as it's all. not, because when are, so I believe there's, that's where we're going to double check, which I'm realizing now I did yeah. ahead of this, yeah. but through 2023, or at um, least through June. June 2023, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That a two-year term, that it would be much more advertising. I've been on it for five now. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, two-year term would be. Okay. That, that kind of coincides with the other boards too. That exactly. Those, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that means. Yeah. yeah. So we next meet also on the 18th because we have this next this advisory board meeting in the morning of the 18th and the board meeting that night. So we can yeah. I can show you that schedule. Okay. How it would. Yeah. How everybody would be in there. Well, at least Jean and Arlene, how you fit in there, and how the other term options fit in. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's go on to number five, development and project updates. Okay, so um, chatting about the, let's see, what do I want to do first? Well, let's do Village Place first, the re-syndication. So our schedule is still on track, um, where we're trying to close on the financing um, and the acquisition November of 2023 and start construction right after. So what we've accomplished in the last month is we got the private act, the city's private activity bond allocation, $5.5 million. We got that assigned to this project. Um, so that's all set and ready to go. Most likely, as we develop this pro forma more, uh, we've, the LHA might have to apply for the city's 2023 allocation, which comes out in January. Um, that's what happened on Aspen Meadows. They needed like one and a half years worth to make it happen because private activity bonds are really critical to a re-syndication. Um, so that's in place and most likely we'll use 2023 as well. We did get approval to sell the CPWD building. So that was a weird thing. It's not platted as part of the property. It's its own property owned by LHA. Village Place is owned by LHDC. 
However, for some reason that nobody can necessarily figure out, in 2005, um, the CPWB building was looped into the regulatory agreement with CHAFA. So we had to get their approval. We're not sure what the purpose of that was, but we got their approval. Now that we're out of the 15-year compliance period, um, it really doesn't matter to the investor. So if we wanted to sell off that building, we could. So the Center for People with Disabilities is um, interested. So we're going to start talking to them about whether they want to purchase. We'd have to take a couple of steps to get to that point. But to, it was critical to this project because we needed to know, do we have to include this or not? So we've sorted that. Molly, did you check the Lura for Village Place to see if that was part of mm -hmm. the the usage? It's um, so we got we we reviewed that okay. and Chaffa said you can separate the two. Separate the mm -hmm. two. Okay. So so that was really good. Just knowing that we don't have to renovate that building. How much with would her pain is associated with that building? Do you know the number off your top? Yeah, split that. We have four parking spots over there now, but I've already talked to Kat. As people vacate, we slowly start moving those into our thing so that they are vacant if we do sell, so that they can have that whole parcel. And if CPWD does buy it, then we could still talk about them about, you know, an agreement of some sort to use them. Because they don't use the parking all share. Time. Yeah. Yeah, they don't use it, and then we, we monitor their parking for them through our agreement. So, okay. um, so the next step is we're uh, we're meeting later this week to start. Well, we've already started. We've been looking at it with the attorney and with uh, Sarah Bott, our our consultant. Uh, we're talking about how to approach the investor to talk about exit options. So, kind of it. So I bring it. We did bring the computer. I'm going old school today. Mm -hmm. Um, we're talking about the first option is the greater of fair market value of the property or or debt plus accrued interest or right of first refusal. So we're checking out what the debt currently looks like, um, looking at valuation. I mean, it's starting to get pretty financial at this point. So we're going to be deciding that next and approaching the investor. Um, we understand this investor is not the most responsive or helpful, so Which we're trying to get did. that started early at UNC. Um, they're just not necessarily trying to help out a housing authority. <laughs> so that's the next step. So probably by the end of the year, we should be out there um, getting architecture and general contractor lined up to do that, all that design starting in 2023. Mm -hmm. And that kicks off the rest of our resident process and everything. Like they were that. asking a lot about when this is going to happen. Yeah, it should be 2023 is when we'll have our architect and um, our beginning of and start doing those resident surveys and engagement process. I would start it wasn't your fault. process. It wasn't your fault. Mm -hmm. I would suggest okay. communicating often with them because yes. they really the don't items. know what's happening and, and it's making them nervous because they were asking me when are we gonna when is this all starting over here and i was like yeah. i just know 2023 after kaufman street uh not necessarily okay i don't know the most recent update on kaufman. We wait until kaufman street we well we were going to yeah we ran into budget issues in mm -hmm. kaufman but we really funded it so um we're probably starting in spring now Spring or fall of 23, so it could so, be. Out. So it might still be. And they are doing, they are incorporating design, uh, drainage improvements for uh -huh. this parking lot yeah. and that, so that's great. Okay. So, so it sounds like maybe parking will, if, if the Kaufman Street and the recentification and all the work is not happening at the same time, parking shouldn't be disrupted too much. Not too much. Which would um, I would, I would expect, I feel like we should prep people that there might be some overlap. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, start doing that now, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you're gonna have to remind them every month. Mm -hmm. But what we could do, since Kaufman's ahead of us, we could try and phase out our parking lot work to be later. I mean, we have to wait for the right season anyway. So if we start construction in January 24, 
we wouldn't be doing parking until at least May of 24. And we're gonna have to move people out for this yeah. phases like we did at the other ones? Yeah. Most likely, um, it you know, it kind of, every one is different, but we thought that that worked pretty well, so. Well, you're gonna lose parking anyway because you're gonna have to have storage for construction yeah. and all of that. So mm -hmm. you're gonna lose at least a third of your parking. Just temporarily, yeah. Maybe you guys can strike up a deal with um, GDA for the schools because it's not full. Okay. Yeah. Or maybe an approach Boulder County. Yeah. No one's parking there. Okay. That might change in the winter and as people go back to work, but I'm telling you, it's but not especially full. if we're doing parking lot work in the spring summer, not winter. Yeah. Did we end up putting money? I think we ended up putting our allocation. Our uh, bond allocation. No. Did we put? Um, or home allocation in that? Not to Village Place. Oh, no, to the spoke. Oh, to the spoke. spoke. Yes. Yeah, we spoke have, yeah, especially yourselves. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we may. Yeah. We can do based on that investment to get some spots. Yeah, I, I, I think that that would be a, I mean, I can't speak for obviously organizations, but I, I think it's a worthwhile conversation. Yeah. Especially given all of the chatter about partnerships. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what we're here for. Yep work together. Part of the resident engagement too is asking who would be interested in parking in the garage long term if we could work that out because that would ease the struggles on site. Okay, anything else on village place? Um, just this is not necessary, well it's kind of development, but because we're talking race indication I want to give you an update on the boring and Aspen Meadows. Um, so you've probably seen we the, the flooring was failing that was installed in either 2020 2021 um, and palace was working great with us to talk about <coughs> figure it out as a warranty item they went in and replaced some areas and then did like a test period to make sure it was holding up that was doing well so they have a proposal for what could be done to fix the flooring everywhere um, what it comes down to was it was a floating floor. So there's multiple properties in the front range that are in the same boat where they put like a sound mat down and the floor floats on top. Turns out that was not designed for wheel loads of any sort, not even like an office chair. Mm -hmm. So it was failing anywhere that somebody was using a walker, a wheelchair, the office chair, like right. sitting in the chair. Yeah. So, which is just bonkers to me, but, <laughs> so Palace was working with their supplier um, and the supplier said, the specs say that it's not built for wheel loads. So the, the supplier is not claiming liability. So um, we've been chatting with Palace and our insurance agency and we are going to file a claim to have insurance pay for a permanent fix. Claim on. A claim on, it'll be a combo between the architect and the palace. Because they okay. wrote yeah. the specs, yeah. approved the specs. They should have caught that. They should have caught that. Right. It shouldn't be our responsibility to pay for it. Correct. You're in warranty period, so. It isn't the only thing they didn't catch. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Remember our job? Which one? Though? Well, the architect approved a lot of things that shouldn't have been. And the windows was one of them. And well, now yeah. got the form. Well, the windows are a little different because yeah. those actually do meet the they do meet the FASA standards. We don't like them, but they but they do meet the UFAS standards. Yeah, are the, okay, they the, the okay the USF is one thing, but the DOJ site says no. So the DOJ ADA site says no, but that's a different issue. I'm, we're talking flooring now, okay? And we will deal with the windows when we have money to deal with them. <laughs> well, there, we are going to request at Village Place that those types of windows aren't used. Which no, it would have been, and, and, um, and the thing is, Palace had the crank windows, which would have been perfect, instead of take out the screen and all that jazz. But I'm not surprised the architect missed it, and I'm all for filing the claim because I know the architect kind of missed it before. Mm -hmm. um, so missing it on the floor is another, you know, 
Go for it. Yeah. And we're going to, it's going to be a different floor product altogether. We're doing yeah. it this route. So we're not going to take the risk that reusing the material on site by removing the underlayment and then just putting it back, we don't want to take the risk that that doesn't end up working well with the second yeah. installation. Okay. Uh, so what's to be figured out, so we're going to be in the claims process for a bit. Um, what is to be figured out next is a schedule and resident um, a plan to get the work done. Yeah. Yeah. So it's going to be, it's not, you know, it's not great news. So but the we want flooring that is permanent. Have, so the people have to be moved, will have to move out of their apartments while they do this or not? We will because they'll have to be moving furniture around to lay the flooring. Um, I, we don't know yet how, how many days it will take, um, if they just have to be out during the day or if it's a, it's a hotel situation, that's still to be, de to be determined. We have to, you know, once we get our insurance claim, then we have to get the scheduling, the scheduling and the installer on. So, so we may have two places that are going to be needing housing at the same time, more or less. Possibly if there's an overnight situation, depending on the disruption. We'll work through it. We're gonna yeah. get, yeah. We're gonna get yeah. good flooring after. That's how it goes. Um, <laughs> so the Hover land, the land next to Hearthstone and Lodge that LHDC currently owns, um, we have that RFQ that went out. Yeah. Uh, the period closed September 14th for a developer, development partner. Mm -hmm. Period's closed September 14th last Wednesday. We received eight proposals, so we're looking at those now um, and starting to evaluate. They're, they're, it's a really wide range of what's out there, so on Friday when we're going to talk about what the options are. No okay. At some so point, I will schedule. sit time with you and we'll talk about the options. Katie's doing a summary right now of kind of what they're, what they're all proposing. It's a mix. I will say that, um, so we said that we were interested in modular. Um, we had done that tour with Indie Dwell, mm -hmm. and so we put that on there as a, include a modular partner. One did, with the caveat that we would explore it further. All the others said modular is not cost effective according to their opinion. So that's something we'll chat about when it's mm -hmm. happening. Um, so are we still, this is the one that somebody was going to check with Stewart's on, whether or not that was... We are going to do that still. We haven't started it. We were kind of focusing on getting these proposals in, but we, that's still on our list to do. Mm -hmm. Admittedly, I haven't gotten there yet. Okay. And working out with LHDC what the, the transfer will look like, the, property, the asset yeah. transfer. Yeah. Um, so we do meet with LHDC tomorrow, and I'm going to bring that up with them. So we'll see if, if we come to a decision or maybe just explore the options still tomorrow. Um, and then Chrisman, if you've been by, they're, they're excavating. So things are looking good. We have Katie from our group, that I know she's on our development side. She's attending their OACs, keeping track of everything coming through. So where's that at? About 66 and just east of, uh, the, west of the gas station at Maine. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, I never get there anymore. Sure, but yeah. So, it's, it's just a lot of dirt right dirt. now. <laughs> <laughs> I love the high on the dirt. <laughs> That's my favorite. Yeah. I, I see it really good for 66. Yeah, I love the construction stuff. That's, yeah, I'm not sure they hang out um, in the trailer. Yeah. The construction guys there. So, so I'm sure you guys have <laughs> answered this question before, but when this gets put in, is there going to be any kind of a sound barrier to block that traffic noise on 66? We, the buildings and the layout was designed to avoid the traffic noise at the outdoor amenity areas, and then the building um, envelope is enough to attenuate the noise inside the building. So it won't be like a sound wall. That's really, the sound wall that would have been needed there would have been massive. So instead we redesigned to put the amenities towards the back end. Okay. Yeah, so they had to do a sound study, and there were just a couple of spots that um, exceeded the HUD noise level, and it was really for the outdoor amenities. So indoors, the structure itself would bring sound levels within the HUD requirements. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so otherwise, for development, just uh, we're in the concept. I'm gonna go take that. I'll, I'll jump on if you guys are still going once we're done here. Um, Tracy's gonna go talk vouchers with Boulder County. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> um, otherwise, concept development on affordable assisted living. We have a potential development partner with really good. Um, Experience and backing by the National Development Council that we already have a contract with for, for consulting. Um, so they're putting together a, a letter of intent of sorts to see if we're going to with it, partner with them. Um, they're interested in, in doing assisted living in Colorado. They've done it a ton in Illinois. Um, and they have, oh, who, was, who were they working with at the state that's interested in doing it? Was it Chaffa or DOH? I can't recall off the top of my head. Maybe both. Possibly. I know Chaffa. He's been talking sure to Chaffa, Chaffa right? Yeah. Um, so it's, I mean, things are looking pretty promising at the moment. And there's a bunch of funding that just got done through Department of Housing at the state level that they're they're figuring out how to spend. Right. So, so we've lots been, of funding available. We've been on some of their, um, I mean, it's so difficult right now keeping track of all of the funding sources, especially coming straight out of DOLA, DOH, DLG, the whole group. Mm -hmm. um, but we've been included on some of those preliminary calls <coughs> that they want going forward. Now that one's an interesting one because most of the funding going into it is primarily city funding, but we're going to have to use LHA as a vehicle for city funding, so it's more of a city project of which we're using LHA as a vehicle because of the tax components and the, the lending. Mm -hmm. so, what, mm -hmm. so what we're talking about is um, having a, a pipeline, a priority for LHA to send folks to. That's in, a, in exchange for investment, we want a pipeline for LHA residents. And we're talking about um, the, the, afford, the assisted living providers, the medical providers, aren't necessarily on really interested in the like property management compliance side right so yeah. right we might bring those two together um yeah. so that's what we're yeah just still it's, figuring it out doesn't Bowen have mm -hmm. an affordable system living mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. okay so yeah. this is it, it, it we've got something to, mm -hmm. to learn from yeah, yeah. the we numbers are a little different so what yeah. we're yeah. talking is 100 to 200 units versus mm -hmm. i think the green homes in loveland or Right. Not, that many. not that many units yeah yeah so this developer this is really a larger development is helps it make it more financially feasible and so we would have a combo probably of private pay and affordable yeah. and of the affordable I mean either some or all is LHA okay well that's nice if we have the pipeline for LHA residents to get the affordable piece first and then we don't have to touch the service provision either. There might be. That's a, not our yeah. LHA. Is a, but given the partnership, there might be cost savings built in even for private pay. Because I know, like, for the normal person, like my grandmother's at a sister living, $7,000 a month. I know. Right. I know. Who has that? Mm -hmm. and then, mm -hmm. um, She's just, very fortunate that she just, can afford that. You mm -hmm. just drain everything that you want. Oh. To your, there yeah. is nothing left. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, because uh, what we've run into is a lot of our residents that had to go uh, had to go through qualifying for Medicaid in order to afford it. Mm -hmm. And even just helping with qualifying for Medicaid would be a huge, mm -hmm. right. a, a huge benefit mm -hmm. because that's a process in half. Yeah, that's uh, definitely involved. In the yeah, yeah, extremely. Yeah. So there could be people so, who get the affordable piece, but not the Medicaid. Some people who get both affordable and Medicaid, and then some who are just private pay, but that might get a little bit of a discount on the cost just based on how it works. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that could be really nice. But though. luckily, this group is pretty well versed at putting group workers together with all of those factors awesome. involved. Okay. Um, oh, and they're looking, the, the first step is who they need to look for a spot <laughs> or, or, or a repurpose. So, well, there's a backyard in Aspen there. <laughs> yeah, right there. <laughs> is there, I know you're probably heavily involved in this in the years down the road, but is there a shipper now? 
space? That won't work because the uh, environmental issues there are so expensive. There's no way you could put something like this in and have it work. That's going to be pretty much market-based just because of the cost of environmentals. We do have, there's a city parcel we're exploring, um, and they are, you know, they've got their real estate people looking otherwise. And are we still, do we still have land that's slated to be down by the first and main station? The, the Royal Mobile Home Park? Yeah. So that is um, city owned right now. We are planning on using ARPA funds to purchase for, for the purpose of affordable housing. At this point, that's looking more like a transit-oriented development, just um, a multifamily, right. yeah. okay. not assisted living. But um, we're kind of let, letting these guys be there. What they do will let us know what you find. Okay, that's all development. Um, I just wanted to, it's not really, a, I guess a, this is more organizational, but I did want to mention we have new hires and if you have that in there, I can just skip it. But I just want to mention, uh, we made a conditional offer yesterday to someone to be our new administrative assistant for LHA Dedicated. Um, so she's, uh, hopefully we'll start around October 3rd is when she gets all the screening complete. So that will be a huge help. Um, we have a new, well, you know, the, we have a new assistant community manager, Joshua, that's here and at the Aspens. Mm -hmm. um, and then we had a, Great interview yesterday with uh, an HCV specialist. We had one, Marcus, who we hired earlier this year. He vacated, um, and but we've got something in the works there, so it's it's looking good. Maybe help him. Just that's my last update. And I saw that the city approved a bunch of increases for the inflation cost of living in the budget for next year. Yeah, so that's not for the LHA, but we've got to incorporate in it, and it's, um, so it's not necessarily cost, it's not necessarily inflation cost of living. We benchmark our positions against other jurisdictions, and so what we saw is a 6% move um, in positions this year, plus we pay at 101, so we're moving everyone that was at 101, 6%, that's the minimum move that we're seeing. We're moving up to a max of 12% if they're behind their individual markets. And then we're engaging with Mercer, of which we've got to figure out how to bring LHA into the Mercer stuff. Um, but Mercer is one of the top three HR compensation firms in the nation. It's like Towers, Watson, Mercer, and yeah. And, um, and so they, they were starting the work now. So we'll be doing another comp analysis, um, and um, in in the city's budget, we've boosted my contingency like three four hundred thousand. That way, if we need to make adjustments based on Mercer, we can do it. But it's pretty heavy movements right now. So you're gonna try and find a way to keep LHA staff into that. Yeah. So LHA's budget we're working on now, so that will go. To, you guys will see. Uh, an update on that for the next meeting. It'll go to the LHA board November 1st. So that the salaries are being looked at in this budget right now. So just out of curiosity, have you seen a significant number of staff go to other jurisdictions for salaries? Or are we? Um, yes. I think it depends. I mean, there's a lot of things that are going on. So like Marcus, for example, went back to his previous jurisdiction for a management position. Um, so we're seeing a lot, we're seeing some people move because of salary. Um, the big issue actually is getting people to apply. And, um, and so um, compensation is a part of it. There's so many different factors that are a part of it right now. And it depends on the types of positions. Um, our biggest need probably is in our operational side mm -hmm. and our public safety side right now, but different pockets are showing different needs, but money's part of it. So we'll see. I would say applying for LHA jobs are one of the easier ones. Or not LHA, the city of Longmont. Yeah, you know, we, we retooled our website because it was a pain in the butt. <laughs> and, um, and that was as much as a turnoff. And so we completely, 
if you haven't applied recently or seen it recently, it's pretty simple now. So we're, we're streamlining the process to do that. Yeah, because that's one thing, one thing I hear from people all the time is they, they tailor their resume and their cover letter for the job. And then when they go to apply, they have to rewrite the whole thing in yeah. an online application that they can't copy and paste from. Right. Yeah, well, it's like not going to allow. Well, you still have to attach the resume yeah, and the cover letter. Yeah, but if but you don't anymore. fill out the application and only yeah. attach the resume and cover letter, they won't look at you. So you have to do double the work. Mm -hmm. And then I know at Boulder County, they de identify all the data. So you only get the application. You can't tell who it is until they get through the first pass. Mm -hmm. um, that's a that's a diversity and inclusion piece, which I think, you know, is great, but it makes the process harder for us hire, trying to hire. Yeah. But yeah, if you make the application process hard, then people are like, forget it. It's not yeah, that big exactly. And then, you know, we always, as public entities, post the salary ranges and hiring mm -hmm. ranges. Mm -hmm. That's another thing. If you don't do that, I don't apply. Right. You don't tell me what the salary is. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, big things we did is we've really made a shift to um, open until filled. So we're not using posting dates anymore because um, posting dates will, Judge by the you. time, by the time yeah. it closes, every, your top yeah. candidates will all probably take a job. So we're reviewing real time and bringing them in. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. I saw that over. I think I'm done Good. on the item. Right. We are then going back to number seven, resident quality of life. Review summary of survey data. So, um, in reviewing those results, really uh, just circling back to previous conversations we had, we wanted to really decide what to do with this information, um, given the board's request to receive advice on resident quality of life from this group. Um, and Jean, back in July, you said that using this information to address concerns with the residents on a quarterly basis categorize them, and I'm thinking report out um, to make it an actionable item, either recommended to the board, or now that you've read the summaries, what do you think on, on what to do with this to make actionable items? I mean, I would go property by property and do like immediate ease of, of doing how will it affect, like immediate effect, mm -hmm. how easy it, like low hanging fruit, list those first. Mm -hmm. And then things that are gonna take a little bit more planning, maybe have for consideration. But it, every property was different. Yeah. Well, pretty much, I, and, mm -hmm. and I agree with that. As long as we make sure that the people know that we're taking a look, this is what we're, we're gonna address, this is gonna be addressed in the future. Because I think that was the thing was, we were not communicating mm -hmm. real well to people. Um, and and part of that, I think, is because of the pandemic, the changeover to the city, all of that kind of stuff kicked into it. And I don't know that everybody really understood all of that. Mm -hmm. But that came up a lot was, yeah. Yeah, it seemed like a lot of the information in this is kind of outdated because of some of the hurdles have been crossed because mm -hmm. um, communication has improved. The rapport among managers and residents has, has really become phenomenal. Um, I, I think one of the pieces that we, we just need to, you know, in any organization is the follow up mm -hmm. and the follow through. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's, I, I agree, you know, the, you know, the lower hanging fruit first and, you know, before it goes bad, before mm -hmm. um, yeah. <laughs> <Or> rots and falls. <laughs> but um, but uh, I, I think follow through is going to be a critical one, um, and um, uh, the in terms of the, the communication piece was huge at the time of this, and um, that that's ameliorated. But there's still complaints about follow through. Mm -hmm. Um, it, you know, we've got situations in every property that are just hanging. And, and what isn't happening is no explanation for why they're hanging. And no, no reckon, yeah, we heard you, but this is what's blocking us. Mm -hmm. Do you and, have an example? Huh? Do you have an example? Well, a simple, you know, um, uh, like the lights in the back now. 
Yeah, ask Meadows. They're, they're out. Oh, because they, they are working on them, so I know. And but, they've been working on them for two weeks. Yeah. But the thing is, we're not, we're, you know, every day we mention it to maintenance that, hey, they blipped on and blipped off again, and one of them didn't light up at all, and that keeps happening, and nobody's out there doing anything. So one day we saw somebody out there working on them, and we hoped that was a fix, but it didn't. But we're not getting any feedback on what you what's going on and uh, you know it's like okay that so the burden's on us to keep complaining keep complaining and that gets old well, it's, it, yeah and that's like an open item it's just there's things that have unfortunately took in priority the last few weeks sure. that, that i can't and, spare and, days and, and the thing is that 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 it's okay to tell residents that mm -hmm. this is on our list it's getting higher priority we have some um, critical mm -hmm. issues that we have to deal with first. Mm -hmm. Just a quick something that says mm -hmm. that a piece of them. It's just it's the acknowledging that acknowledging their concern instead of um, it, ignoring it is how they're feeling. And I think so. Some of it gets related to like one or two residents that doesn't get passed on to others, and and, and that's what I'm saying. If we if you find a formal way of just letting people know whether it's on a bulletin board or something hey we're working on the light, lights in the back you know kind of mm -hmm. something that just brings uh, brings management to life and and acknowledges the concerns the residents have do you, do you understand what i'm saying mm -hmm. yeah it's just do you guys have any newsletters that are like all things they're they're lha wide newsletter not necessarily property by property yeah there is a board is yeah. the board still there in Austin? yeah there's boards that i think all the communities now so yeah i'm just a practice of like you know work coming up that's scheduled open items yeah you don't need to make it formal just let them know what's going on in there. well i think part of it will be part of what i'm working on that i'll go over is like some quarterly building walks mm -hmm. where yeah. management's getting a list of everything mm -hmm. i'm seeing from the curb appeal all the way through every storage unit mm -hmm. and there's i'm setting deadlines for them to complete stuff mm -hmm. and if they don't complete it by that date they have to have kind of a report back to me then that so i know what's going on because i know yeah. dave's like updated me with those lights and there's one issue led to another issue that led to another issue that led to another issue and then he has to get pulled to go do an eviction or something else yeah so. yeah yeah and those it's just a matter of uh, uh keeping in touch with what's like a, yeah. like a i think maybe a weekly update of just items that are yeah, just real, yeah. yeah. nothing real too fast. formal but uh, yeah. just have it one place to put something yeah, yeah. where and people know they can get it transportation it doesn't surveys too receive much yeah work transportation receive open items for maintenance this this and this mm -hmm. you know what makes simple is just get a tv and put it by the office so where the manager or just put where the managers have like a scrolling presentation Updates. on it and then it just runs yeah and people can see it mm -hmm. that was a bad idea oh. and then we have all of our house. housing <laughs> <laughs> i was like they get the fair house <laughs> well i mean i mean you you can get a basic <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 and we might have like cities <laughs> or places oh we have some <laughs> yeah, yeah and you just literally it's, it's a powerpoint the, on a thumb drive that you right. plug into the tv yeah. and yeah. just and that would just yeah so yeah because that's how we did all our fair housing so then we didn't have to have them posted we did all the fair housing marketing on there, everything, available units or the floor plans. So as somebody's sitting in the lobby, they see everything and all that the updates. Cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would so, be so, so cool. Lisa says there's some TVs here. We might see if they work. <laughs> they just <laughs> don't see work. if we have like city yeah, supplies I, or anything. Well, if you do it by the office, then what you do is uh -huh. mm -hmm. you can just run a, a, a USB. You just run a cable, uh, HDMI cable, mm -hmm. into the office on the splitter, and then they can just do it from their desk. They take their laptops from community to community. That's why they just plug in. You just plug in. I can help you with that. <laughs> Carol's going to put on his IT hat. Yeah. 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 I think that's a great idea. Just, oh, that'd be awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And then that's right. Maybe you then start putting your fair housing stuff and we just start scrolling yeah. everything on. But that's what we did. We did the floor plans yeah. for housing, um, important updates, uh, resident events that were coming up that everybody needed to know about. So, mm -hmm. you know, it was just a loop. 
So that we're going to start good. then with Aspen Meadows, and then we'll roll out to everybody. Or test it out there. Yeah. Mm. There actually may be some that are easier to start with because then they already have. TVs. Yeah, we'll have to figure it out. Yeah. So in terms of um, advice and feedback to the board, this is one of our maybe low hanging fruit items to get started on. Yeah. Yeah, because a lot of the rest of this is um, dollar signs, you know, mm -hmm. um, you know things things that need to be uh, uh, purchased and or uh, well, followed through on the, like the, the activities and the games. Yeah, the transportation, the the via, mm -hmm. right. right? We we have a vision. Yeah, and then the one of one of the really important pieces to the folks that I spoke about was the security cameras, which I think has already been done. Yeah. Yeah. That's so that's thought. already done. Yeah, so maybe still, even yeah. we can report on that because I don't mm -hmm. I don't know if everybody else likes it, but I like to make a list and then put things that I've already done and cross it off and give myself a there, there you go. <laughs> yeah. 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 The true project manager right here. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. in almost every location now and we have the C B D G grant so it's and I think we just did an update on the C B D G grants in the last newsletter, but I can maybe have Scott because that's an ongoing thing as we're going through, yeah. right? Um, yeah. Davis Bacon and all that, just keeping them updated. The funds, is, it's coming. Thank you. Uh, it's Have y'all talked to J JV about doing the Project NOLA camera? Mm -hmm. No. Um, remind me, that's not the, is, that's not the, um, the school district slash police well, that's, well, the, that's, the, that's the antennas, actually. With the Sorry. antennas, it's a police right. issue. The cameras we're putting in our parks, but that program is designed to where private entities can come in and buy a camera, and it gives police access. Also, certain individuals will have access to it. Um, and just let somebody like Sarah report in, or whomever, quickly. Um, $550 a camera, two years operating and then you have to jump into operating so i don't know what the other systems cost well we have we have cwg grants already assigned to fully cover exterior and common area cameras at all properties but have you bid it out or um we have one bid but for cdb to be eligible for cdbg it's got it that gets into procurement stuff we have to sort out if we did it that way instead Sure, we could pay. Yeah, that scroll that would scroll up that stuff too. It would make it too hard. Okay, so is do you want to keep talking about that? I want to make sure that we have an action item to the board on the resident survey. So I'm happy to report this, convey it. If somebody wants to go to the LHA board meeting and, and speak from the advisory board. I would let you decide if you want to do that. I'm happy to just convey that to the GUI, but let us know what if you have a preference. The big thing on all of these is accountability um, in this, and what I would say is that's just continuing to eat everybody's time up right now, mm -hmm. and like specifically on maintenance, just moving through the evictions and and dealing with all of those issues. Um, we had three or four issues pop up yesterday that um, it, it's just, that's probably the biggest driver right now or time sink, mm -hmm. is, is accountability and, and what we're seeing happening in different properties um, and managing like meth contamination. And so that's, um, just know that there are things that slip um, we had a unit where we were informed over the weekend, residents were calling about things they were hearing in the unit, um, called the police, um, somebody that's not on the lease is in the unit, the tenant themselves moved out with other individuals because they felt unsafe, and so we have to post 24 hour notices issue three days and so we're going to be dealing with that this this week <coughs> excuse me um we had another eviction coming up this week where last minute why last minute department or 
Adult Protective Services decided to call after they decided not to take it originally. So we had to deal with that issue. Uh, what was the third one? The resident with the knife here. Yeah. So accountability is turning into a really big issue. Um, a fight here that occurred. So not to diminish everything else, but just know that yeah, you're right. constantly reshifting. Yeah. And so yeah. we've gone a while without major issues. Mm -hmm. And it's like something happened over the last week where it just <laughs> 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 yeah. It just blew up. So I mean, I think that's the hard piece. But you know, the point is on the accountability side is we all know what we got into when we when we all kind of started dealing with this, and you just can't release pressure because we will end up in the place that we were two years ago yeah. if we don't stay on these issues and so that's a um, fairly significant issue to the point I'm supposed to be off Thursday but I'm not taking off Thursday so I can spend time with Lisa on dealing with some of these issues um, but yeah it's not going to be we're going to have the police officers with us on a Probably half. Not. Oh, like, that's why Sarah was calling. She's yeah. got her and her scheduled to work. Well, that's all they tell me that we reviewed the survey data and the action items that you guys want to make sure the board is aware of. October 18th? October, oh, yes, yeah, sorry. October 18th. Would it be helpful if, like, I tried to go through these and sort of, like, find the property? That would be so and then wonderful. Also, like, for some of the things where people need purchases, try to group them so that you yeah. can, like, budget for it yes okay. I basically took what um, Karen and Michelle had started and just dropped in everything that was missing so this is this is all you know this is pretty comprehensive a summary version of okay. what I was hoping to provide to you but this is what it ended up being I volunteer <laughs> to start putting that okay. together because okay. I know you guys have a good principle and then if you want to reach out to me like once you got that and then I can say what's been completed where we're at on some yeah. of this and, and then we yeah, can have that, like an the update the status yeah yeah yeah, yeah. 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 Which that would help. That would be cool. Okay. Yeah. So, Harold, I have a question for you. Um, would it make a difference if we opened up a unit, and I, I don't know, in, you know, maybe not specifically now for the ones that we have, but at, in the future, for a police presence at these facilities, would that, if they see the car there or see the person there, would that make a difference, do you think, at all? I mean, the challenge of that is how they were financed and what you can use the units for because um, I think some places we have manager units that were in the financing agreement, mm -hmm. and so they have to be management. We can't just yeah. move someone in. Mm -hmm. um, the, the, you know, so that's part of the challenge we have in how our structures were built. Um, that is something that other communities have done, and they give, and I saw this in the last two communities I worked in, apartments would give public safety uh, reduced rates for rent, mm -hmm. and uh, but part of their obligation was they would walk around, and, and that does work, it's not a cure-all. Um, in the last communities I went into, there were certain communities where they could have given it to them free and they wouldn't have moved in just because they knew the issues, and so, Yes, but I think the bigger issue for us is we don't necessarily have the ability based on the way that the financing is put together on these. But is it something to think of in the future? Maybe, future yeah. Planning? Yeah. Maybe something we could do. And, um, but yeah, we could, we could look at that. Maybe we can, we can classify as manager or security or something and have more flexibility in it because. It's also pretty regimented too in that what we've seen is you don't necessarily want the property manager that's managing that facility to live in that unit. Right. But we run into issues of let's say Spring Creek's manager would take the unit here, the manager here would take the unit at Lodge. Yeah. You right. We run into issues where you can't do that either, mm -hmm. yeah. and and so that then makes it incredibly hard on the managers that live in the units because then they they never get away, and right. and so mm -hmm. it, it's something we can use, but we've got to really figure this out so that how we can thread the needle where 
it would work if we could put Spring Creek's manager position. They can any manager can live anywhere, mm -hmm. as long as it's a manager for our, for the housing authority, but not necessarily have the manager of that property live in that property because that is a problem. Yeah, the only time that worked was when there were assistant managers right. that took over at night mm -hmm. and covered it on the rest of the twenty four seven. That yeah, you're right. I I wouldn't do it now because they don't. There's no backup for them. Yeah. So, no. And I mean, and, and the issue is, is I mean, it's it's sort of this mutual respect where I think people, you know, you're on. You're on, you know, I think a lot of times the residents, you, you know, you need to deal with my issues whatever time it, they exist. And there's no right. respect in this to where, um, in a lot of cases, a lot of us would go, that's not a big issue, I'll call them more. Mm -hmm. They're banging on their doors. Mm -hmm. And so that's, a, we, we got to figure that out, but I know they've been thinking about it. Yeah. So that's part of the issue. I mean, it's mm -hmm. what we're restricted to do. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's uh, what I was going to say. Uh, so, kind of trying to close this, uh, the survey data, Lauren, you're going to talk about it. Yeah, it's in Lauren's got the ball. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, let me drop it, Gene. <laughs> 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 All right, going on to number eight LHA report, update on operations, occupancy report. I think it was Jean who had requested kind of, um, I've added another report I love it. that yeah. kind of shows yeah. the long term yeah. yeah. And I, I was looking at it this morning and I did notate all the points that may have been vacant for a little bit longer that were met from but you would know by yeah. yours. Yeah. Like, um, this is awesome. And so as Tracy's yeah. working, we're, we just did a big update on Yardi. Tracy's really working with the managers to make sure they're putting their notes in it. I did mine bigger, so oh, see. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it kind of just gives you an up, a brief update how long each unit's been vacant and why. This doesn't. This is about two weeks older than the other report in here that I do for the vacancy. Okay. Um, but this was kind of a snapshot when I did the report of what was out there. Yeah. Um, so the suites has quite a few vacants. You can see some of them long term, but those are most of them are meth or they have applicants on it. So yeah. So any. And I'll just do this one like basically quarterly, I think, just so you guys can see quarterly where the units are, how long they've been down, because some of them get turned real fast. Like somebody moves out, we have somebody moving in two, three weeks later, and it's not necessarily reflected in the other reports. Mm -hmm. But these do show the long term vacants. Any questions on those? Or why one's been down? Or? Uh, uh, well, and I'm familiar with the ones at, at Aspen and. Um, uh, I'm assuming you have a lot of roadblocks to filling because we've had those five open for so long. Um, you, but you, you're running into roadblocks, and um, you know, is that wait list um, all? I'm, I'm not sure if, if even an open wait list means you can get on it, or an open wait list says we're taking it off the wait list. You know, to fill what what is. Yeah, so right now we have Village Place and Fall River Mine Camp. We have the wait list open. So as people are applying, we're telling them we have a unit open and they're like, oh, I'm not ready, I need three months. Then they go actually on the wait list. But if they're like, yeah, I need to move in two, three, four weeks, you know, mm -hmm. we'll start working their application right then and there. Mm -hmm. So. Okay. Um, because we, we don't want to hold a unit vacant for somebody who's not moving for three months. Right. For right. another three months that have yeah. been already. Yeah, but I'm down. just, yeah, I'm just, I'm, I'm assuming you, you've, You've really had a lot of roadblocks that these would have been filled. Correct. And we, we found Aspen Meadow Senior Apartments, like for example, their waitlist is basically stagnant, but we have to work through the rest of the exactly. waitlist before we open it and get new. Yeah. But I've been talking with Tracy, who's now with the compliance side, and working with me, and so that's open here just all the time. So people who are actively looking yeah. aren't just applying because, oh, it's open. That you right. know, oh, I can get right. on this at any time. You know, when right. I'm really looking to move, I can add my name. Okay, so all right, so that's so I think that will help us in the future yeah. to um, fill okay. some of these. Okay. 
but I know for Aspen Meadows, she said she's called 30, 40 people and got one applicant. I, I am, so. you know, we heard the same story at Fall River. Yeah, so theirs yeah. is now open, Village Place is now open. Yeah, because so. they've been on it for so long that it's, you know. They yeah. found somewhere else or they've moved on. Yeah, or, mm -hmm. right. So part of that is, um, there was an interesting article that, that came across yesterday is, um, and it was really just about Colorado in general in terms of migration patterns and in migration and out migration. Mm -hmm. and, and what's really starting to happen is people are leaving the state yes. yep. because of inflation That's and cost right. of living. Mm -hmm. right. and, and so especially those, what it really focused on is like the average income of everyone moving into the state is a hundred or it was like a hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Those that were leaving is their income was zero to seventy five thousand yeah. dollars. Mm -hmm. And and so that's I think part of what we're starting to see is it, you know, it used to be I need to find an affordable place to live, but mm -hmm. I can manage the other expenses. Now it's Oh crud! Now I need an affordable place to live, and I can't manage the other expenses. And, and so there's some interesting dynamics starting to happen in in and out migration that I think is also starting to show up in this. And the reason we're probably calling wait list and not getting folks is because they're not in the area or the state. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So what's interesting is we have to. You know, we have to be really careful here because we've got a lot of development coming up. I mean, we need to be able to, I mean, market studies, they rely on market studies, but um, to be considered for more funding from the state, et cetera, they look at this. Yeah. Um, so we have to show due diligence and so it's something we have to watch. And I think it may be something that we're seeing, it may be something that we're really just seeing in the older or older adult population. Versus what we're seeing in our family that population. Would, yeah, right. that would be a good if they get the demographics on that. Yeah. Even though you've got the zero to seventy-five thousand, who is that? Yeah. yeah. Right. But I was gonna say I do complaints for a farmhouse over on um, one nineteen mm -hmm. near the Walmart. We're doing some um, inclusionary housing complaints for them, and I see them getting applicants for fam families nonstop. Like I've approved mm -hmm. two to three people for yeah. one house for one apartment mm -hmm. because. They, they find something sooner, faster, or cheaper, and then I get another applicant two weeks later for that same apartment. So there's people, but not, yeah. I think, our, We know that money. Cinnamon Park, which is 25 units yeah. of senior, they were having a, they were having a hard time. I think they we were talking to Maria, our project manager, same our, with our property our manager, like, Please help. spoke, and they were like, how are you leased up at 73 units already? Mm -hmm. And it might have been, maybe it's that, the age group. Mm -hmm. We don't have that many seniors at that property. That's, that's the that's the issue that, was, that is really starting to to show itself, and we may have to. I don't know. We gotta but, we have to watch it. Yeah, uh, but aren't we looking at what Kristen too and and the Hover? What else? Those family. are all family. Those yeah. are all family. Yeah, and that and I think that's where the thrust has been going. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and that in terms of senior, we need to be looking at the. Assisted living, the affordable assisted living. Yeah. Because you have the full continuum. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that Families, would be, and seniors, that would bring an end of life care. Yeah. 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 It is temporary. Okay. Um, hit highlights and stuff. Yeah, so yeah. the LHA occupancy availability report, I've continued just the meth units. We have a few more added, a few taken off. Um, We've had two evictions that we did not anticipate being meth units that were meth units, so we're just working through that, and then most of the bad move outs kind of that coincide with what's going on. I know we're running out of time, but I just want to say, when I found out how much you guys had to go through to clean up that one unit, um, kudos to you, because I don't know that I would be willing to do that, so. And we've had some. Mm -hmm. Not fun experiences with some of these units lately. Yeah. So yeah. 
we had one where it took us an hour and a half just to get through the kitchen and into the living room. Another well, the whole group of how many people? That was 13 employees. So it was every maintenance staff, and that's kind of yeah. how you get to the other issue. Yes. Yeah. 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 Every maintenance staff person has to come in on the evictions, and yeah. it just slows everything down. Yeah. 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 So every manager is in there. I even We had Melinda, our service coordinator. Yeah. She came over. Our new hire, Josh, she was in there. And, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And have we added the, the meth testing yet to the grant agreements? I mean, not the grant we're, we're, the, the, uh, yeah, the agreements. Yeah. We're waiting on the insurance to get all of that in okay. right. mm -hmm. because we have to talk to the insurance company about pulling the trigger on that because. They're going to see that. Well, yeah, yeah. Well, you, yeah, yeah, what you're going to see is this, but then this. Yep. Mm -hmm. But we need to do that in conjunction with so the insurance they, company. The insurance company agrees that this sounds like a reasonable thing to do, but the, will the underwriters underwrite us? Right. Right. That's the question that's out there. So okay. yeah. There's still work to do. Yeah. When do they give you kind of time frame on that one? We have to circle back. Okay. I mean, they don't. It's it's that decision. Once you go to the underwriters, have we already have we showed all our cards? Right. Okay. <laughs> um, so we still have to strategize a little bit. We are insured right now. Right. We got our, <laughs> we got our, our new, we got our policy renewals. We got our renewals. policies and they have underwrite us, and but now it's still in the next year. Policy yeah. for the next year. <laughs> so we do, now that we are, it's, it's all signed as of like a week ago. So we just need to um And I think that's where we strategize. can stand to say, you know, we've got to break down the cost to go. If we catch it at this level, it's a cleaning. Mm -hmm. It's not a full remediation. Right. Yeah. And then we bring it into the agreements, which then makes the likelihood that you have the full. I mean, we've mm -hmm. got to really make that argument tight. Mm -hmm. And then uh, somehow, I think the thing we got to figure out is that in, you know, honestly, now I would say that we need to probably build in a mid and instead of an annual inspection, we need to do two inspections a year and we need to test at every one of those inspections because I think that will drop the cost down. Mm -hmm. To where it's just a cleaning, and it might inspire some people to not either to, not to use that's or leave yeah. yes. or, or tell their guests because we've had a couple where it's been the guests yeah. and yeah. you know be like no you're you know they're yeah. going to test my unit and, and I'm going to lose my housing for yeah. good yeah yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. not everyone will will care yeah. enough that's but true. hopefully there are those that will and really it's for the benefit of the next door neighbors etc that are yes. going to be impacted too because so. one of our units we did have um, recently did contaminate the neighbor's unit. Mm -hmm. So. And understand some of what we're seeing too, or probably here, is just, I think there's a lack of control on who's getting in on some of the other vouchers. Um, and I think we're seeing people just put people into to, to units and um, not really working with them on what it takes to be successful in a unit. Yeah. And so, you know, here an uptick in the in the number of folks that are not on the LHA side because we know what we do, but on the MHP, mm -hmm. alcohol use, fighting, and it's just people are housing folks without working with them, mm -hmm. and um, and so we're we're going to engage in that conversation pretty quick because um, they're not supporting them, and then they're not successful. Yeah. And then we're evicting them, and the minute we pull the eviction trigger, they will not be able to find a place to live. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. They're not doing any disservice. Right. Yeah. Um, um, I started doing quarterly uh, management maintenance walks, and basically we start at the top of a property, we walk all the way through. We've done three in the last two weeks, um, so it's giving maintenance kind of a deadline to get some of these little projects that have been open for years done, um, things that are high cost. One was for here, the suites example. Their laundry rooms have either no trash can or a little tiny trash can that isn't. So it was order three trash cans for the, you know, not a huge cost, but it's something that needed to be done, but not done. Now it's done. Mm -hmm. um, going through that, even looking for little maintenance, the caps on the elevator, rails that we're missing, stuff like that. So we're doing very detailed, very maintenance isn't loving it, but it's giving them deadlines to get some of this done as well. And then mm -hmm. along with management to keep following up on them. To get well, that back. goes back to your low hanging fruit. We're, we're dealing with these things that people are constantly complaining about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's 
like I said, three, three out of nine are done. I have one this afternoon and I think one tomorrow afternoon too. Um, and that's, and I haven't scheduled for the next year. So, <laughs> um, let's see. Shuttle transportation. Um, we recently did a survey of all of the residents, um, got quite a good, good, um, response back from those. It looks like the two main places for each community was Walmart and Keen Supers is where mm -hmm. they want to go. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So still working with Via, we were trying to hope to piggyback off of the city. Talked to Phil, Phil did some digging. The city's contract, I guess we can't piggyback off of because they don't have any services like this with Via. They have something else. I, I. Right, I'll talk to Phil. Okay. So jo Joni and um, yeah. Jeff were on that, so that's yeah. where that left off yeah. earlier this week. Uh, um, it's too bad we don't have the history because the Via I know can put together a contract. And we've been, done it before. We had it for 20 years. So. Um, and they can put to, you know, they can work with the equipment needed when and, and scheduling and all that. They'll put it all together and, um, it, and we've got the, we've got the money to do it. So toss that one to them, Lisa, <laughs> and have them put it together and you be free to. But then I have to send it to the attorney. So that thousands and that other things. Okay. Yeah, so. no, I think, I think this is more a contractual issue. Yeah, and a yeah, issue. yeah but contract. they can get the details of it together so that, that let me talk to Phil okay. I think yeah. just because it's not in there doesn't mean we can't have that in there yeah. 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 yeah exactly so I mapped it all out where the key supers are the properties are Walmart's are and got a route even that I think will work but for Dia, them Dia will do that yeah so yeah and and you know because they'll, they'll have to to get the drivers mm -hmm. and the and the particular vehicles needed so they, they do want that so one of the low-hanging fruits from the resident surveys was um, activities and all that. So the managers and I are working on a couple activities that are coming up that are very low cost to LHA, yeah. may even be free. So we, one of them is something we did in Vegas that was amazing. I think I haven't really talked too much about it, but we did um, photo shoots for the residents. There's a couple of photo companies here in Longmont that we were reaching out to to see if they will donate the printing of the photos. Cat's a professional photographer, and my husband is as well. Mm -hmm. So all we have to do is get the backdrop. And so we yes. figured, um, yeah, she's a, yeah. a professional photographer. She did Corinne's maternity shoot. And, mm -hmm. But we figured doing a couple um, photo shoots at each of the properties, giving a four-hour time span. Each residence get 10, hour, 10 minutes to come in, get their, like, a professional picture with a professional backdrop, send them, take the SD card into the photo place and have them print it off. We used Walgreens, which was really low cost, too, last yeah. time. Yeah. But the residents love having a nice 5 by 7 of themselves, and then we gave them the release to go get wallets done, or bigger pictures so wow. they can use them for the holidays. And so it only cost the residents if they wanted to go get wallets or more five by sevens, five, ten dollars, and then they had that nice photo of themselves to give out with their cards to family and stuff That's for the holidays. Awesome. Mm -hmm. So we're that is awesome. So you could work. reach out to Next Slide and see if they can they have jump drives that they okay. have for swag. Oh. And since Good. we're working on the, the um the agreements, you know, the master agreements mm -hmm. then to see if they'll give us the and and then you can just load it on it, and then okay. you don't need to print it. They can yeah. So this is done edited. So that then, you just give them the yeah. jump drive. That yeah. would be perfect. That was our other thought. If, if we couldn't find anybody to print it somehow, get thumb drives or something for everybody. Yeah, just call next. Not everybody can do yes. that, but yeah. that's okay. But you can go to Walmart, Walgreens, or anything with that drive, so plug it in, yeah. and print yeah. it out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. We have the soft. Both Kat and I have the software to do the editing through Lightroom and everything else. So awesome. So. Okay. That's one of them, doing some bingos and everything with some nice prizes. Kat's been calling different organizations and groups and small businesses here in Longmont to get some prize donations. So that we can do some fun bingo yeah, events. Awesome. So those are coming. Um, another maintenance thing we're working on is decorative rock. We've gotten some price quotes, um, got use of a city truck. We did some over at Fall River on their walking path a couple weeks ago, and we plan to hopefully hit all the properties with um, upgrading the where the mulch is into decorative rock, hopefully by the end of the year, weather permitting mm -hmm. and maintenance per permitting. <laughs> Everything else is just each property thing. Uh, I, I have a comment, and this is just um, to let you know it's not a criticism, okay? But I noticed you've got Champa and RBG audits for Aspen Meadows. Today is the 
Uh-huh. And don't put your spin number on it. They're not coming into the units. This is all file reviews. That's what I want to make sure of. Yeah. Because if they're, yeah. And no, you'll get 20. We got, we got stuck one year with no notice at all. Oh. And, and, and it's kind of gun shy. So as long as, as we, and, and then one year it was just 24 hours notice. Yeah, it's not. No. Cool. Mm -hmm. What Tracy and I are doing, as soon as we get a notice on it, we're walking through all these steps. Okay. Is this, are they going to the units? Okay. And then we put on okay. all of our calendars when we get the 24 hour oh, note, a preliminary okay. walk. And Tracy's been really good about doing that. So. That explains why they took over the grab and the other thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're, they're just doing the files. So. All right. Okay. So, nope. yeah, just, nobody's <laughs> knocking on your door. So. <laughs> <laughs> no. I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. So this is cool. Let's jump to the age receipt polls. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, <clears throat> where we're at today is we are, um, I've met with the community managers. <clears throat> about the process. We're going to update our bad debt policy so that it outlines what their responsibilities are and what our responsibilities are because it really didn't outline that. So the first original, like if somebody owes, it doesn't, we don't, we don't see it. It doesn't come to us if they owe. Um, it goes straight to Lisa. So Lisa is the first point of contact or any refund or any um, OBAC basically letter. She's going to review to make sure that the charges are correct because in the beginning what was happening is community managers were charging and they may have been in the unit for 10 years, they probably shouldn't have been charged, deep cleaning, you know, that kind of stuff. So, mm -hmm. so Lisa does the first look and she sends out the first letter. What was happening is no other letters that were happening after that. So um, yeah. the community managers will start doing the 30 day mm -hmm. and then on the 60 day letter it will be basically we're turning you over to collections. Okay. Um, depending on that, we're probably always going to say you're you're being turned over to collections, but then we'll decide if it's within that limit that's it's even worth it. Mm -hmm. um, and I have a call with BC Services. Um, I sent them all our data, and they want to you know we're scheduling a call to actually see what the actual cost of sending these guys to collections. But we need to make sure that all of those individuals have received those letters like, um, yeah. and make sure that we, we've done the corresponding letters for all those. So I know Heather's collecting that on her side and that's what we're going to outline. Then once it goes to collections, it comes over to accounting and accounting takes care of okay. what it needs to to go to collections and we'll probably have to work in, in session with community managers because they'll have the files um, if there's certain things yeah. in the files that we can't see in the system. Um, so we definitely have oh, probably over $65,000 that we can probably send to collections and a lot of this is because of the meth units um, mm -hmm. along with um, just the evictions and the cleaning that has had to occur, um, legal, legal costs and everything. Um, what do you, how much do you think you'll get? Nothing? 10%? <laughs> I know I have I, two that if, <laughs> if we know stuff beforehand we I've been able to get um, one as a court order that she had to pay back certain damages mm -hmm. and then made a payment plan with her after court. She had to come in and after we had the totals. Um, so, and I think one we collected all the court fees back on that we ended up saving. She ended up not getting evicted even though we were granted eviction. Um, we collected all her court fees from the family. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I think if we get 25%, that's a great yeah, result huge. but yeah. if you get anything again it's more about the accountability mm -hmm. and um and that's the big piece is doing this we are also um in we're, and it's overlapping sometimes with lisa most of the time it's hcd but with tracy and compliance is we are filing fraud cases um and so we have already sent a couple into oig and the police department, I think you've got one or two more that we're getting ready to do. So we are sending these into the appropriate law enforcement agencies um, when, when we are seeing fraud. So does this information travel forward with them when they go somewhere else to apply for housing yeah. that this comes up? Okay. Yeah. So once it goes to the collection agency, they will be showing on their credit report that they owe a housing authority. Right. Good. So that prevents a lot of people from renting other places if they see that collection from a housing authority. 
And, and, the, and the fraud piece is important too because my history has taught me that sometimes when you see it, what you'll end up finding <coughs> is there's probably a larger theme that you're seeing. In my last study, we saw somebody that this was really Katrina-related fraud, mm -hmm. but we picked it up in my last city. They ended up finding five of their cities, ended up being mm -hmm. a full-on federal case, mm -hmm. and the individual got um, sentenced to prison yep. because of this. And so our obligation is to ensure that when we see it, we report it. But to your point is that's, that's incredibly important because you might start seeing the overall trend. Mm -hmm. And and if we see it and we see that they're, let's, let's say, connected to the county, we're going to go, you need to be aware of this mm -hmm. um, to try to get her on this issue. Okay. And some of this might to get, we might get some of the insurance claims back for some of this receivable, or is this really just tenant owed? Um, so some of it has been received okay. with insurance, so like the meth unit at a &M. Okay. Um But is there more money that could possibly get received off of it? Yeah, because I, I think... It's they, still a working process? Yeah. yeah, okay. yeah. As long as, yeah. yeah, they find them then. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but at least it puts something on their record, and that's what wasn't happening before. Right. And then we were even re- you know, having people reapply mm -hmm. and taking on those tenants. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, without that being on their credit that they were so here so before. So we're also starting to have conversations countywide because I think a lot of times people don't want to go down the road of eviction. Mm -hmm. and, and the problem is they start passing people along to other folks and then it's just, you look up exactly. and you go, well, oh, you know, yeah, they've had a history of, Mm -hmm. this and this property this property and this property and I think it's important for all property managers to understand it may be easier not to do this but you need to do this so we can build system-wide accountability mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and so we're, we're you were talking to the county well I, the sheriff brought it out to me Sarah Arnie and I have been talking with people from um, the Boulder Area Rental Housing Association and an attorney and all that trying to figure out what's the best way to go about this because like the sheriff made the comment he's evicted the same household five times in the last year and a half mm -hmm. yep and because of how the court suppress records mm -hmm. it doesn't show when you go to do a background check so it's more of the landlords who really needed to be talking to the landlords mm -hmm. doing those rental verifications and us sharing the information mm -hmm. though because we found we did find out that even though the court suppressed the records, we don't have to suppress that we evicted them. We can share that. Okay. Yeah, it's just not searchable. <clears throat> but part of, part of the game becomes, if I tell you that they are evicted, I can't get rid of them to you. But they're already gone if we No, no, no. I'm, I'm just saying, you oh. know, have they had a, a good track record? Well, no, we want them out of here. Yeah. So, I mean, even if I make a complaint like, oh, well, they had a visitor without telling management. Mm -hmm. They won't. They won't take them. Yeah. So that, that's harder with the one the problems that are still housed. Yeah. But yeah. it's a lot of it's like we don't want to be in that situation where the the sheriff said he's evicted the same household five times because mm -hmm. he could have evicted, but their evictions are suppressed, so it doesn't show up. Yeah. So even if you did the last five addresses in the last year, it's like really going through and looking at those previous addresses yeah. that pop up mm -hmm. and checking. I uh, yeah, mm -hmm. it's no it's no. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's go on to uh, any other, anything else in these tools? No, nothing. Yeah. Uh, property financials? Um, yeah, so we're going to start moving this to a quarterly process. Um, we talked with the board that there, there's just not much activity mm -hmm. every month, mm -hmm. so we're going to move it to quarterly. Um, right now, I can tell you that um, I've highlighted um, a couple, you know, showing that the, we're over in vacancy. Um, based on what we budgeted, I can tell you as of today, we are over on every single property on vacancy. Mm -hmm. So this may be June's report, but by August, we're already over on every single um, property for the vacancy loss. Um, the one thing that is good is that we don't budget for the HCV vouchers. So um, we have that going for us. Um, and so We're under collected. Correct. But we also are getting more in certain areas yeah. where we're still within budget for income per se um, and then the same thing with the expenses we're pretty in line for our expenditures 
um, by August, except for the two properties that have MAP issues. Um, and you know, usually yeah. we have more expensive before we get the actual insurance proceeds. So, yeah. so those are the two that we have. But uh, other than that, most of our expenses, as you can see, in even in June, that were either right at the cusp of fifty percent or below fifty percent. Mm -hmm. um, so, with the exception of the dam and and, and yeah. it's the suites now by August. So I don't know if anybody has any questions. So uh, allowance for doubtful accounts, do you think that's okay with the balance that we have out there with us sending some of it over to collections or do you think we might need to beef it up a little bit? Um, we probably need, yeah, we probably need to beef that up. Okay. Yeah. 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 Usually that's done at year end, year end yeah. um, but we can definitely start looking at that on a quarterly basis as well. Okay. Yeah. I think that's a good process to add. I think we'll just leave the voucher issuance count as a yeah. check it out by reference. Yeah. We don't have a huge discussion on that. Anything else with either? No. Other than Thursday is going to be fun. <laughs> So that uh, other business, anybody else have anything else? I just wanted to check and see if we ever um, to get out a memorial type thing for the LHDC member who passed away and right. I know you're meeting with them tomorrow, mm -hmm. so maybe ask That's if right. they have any direction on what we can do in his honor. That's right. Thank you. Good reminder. Who passed away? Anton. 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 He's, he's, he's from like Gaddis and he was a former LHDC board member. Yeah. Just even if it's just like contributing something. In the volume of the service. Thank you for that. All right. Well, I just want to say it was a Proposition 1, 2, 123 is coming up, and that's affordable housing. So hopefully that gets passed, and then we might even get more money from the state. Is that just the one for statewide yeah. reallocating yeah. already collected money? Correct. Right. Please, please vote for that. Please support it. Because okay. that's the one that's attainable housing, too, right? So it's affordable. Uh, yeah, there's like yeah, five different areas. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah which, is, which is the which is attainable cool. housing is a big yeah. piece of that. Yeah. So it'll be kind of cool to see that pass. We did the math based on the amount they want to collect and the number of units. It's about thirty-five thousand units. It's a little figured out. Oh, that's a call. pretty big deal. It was pretty on big home though. Ownership. Yeah. Home ownership. That's a big deal. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Well, that, you're talking about the first year where they get credit for the equity. No, the investment like that the, the state can make oh, yeah, into the, yeah. so when we look at home ownership, we're working a project right now on the city side that, you know, you drop 35000 in from the state, cities can come up 15, 20,000, 15 ish thousand, and all of a sudden you have real world um, home ownership opportunities. Yeah. Yeah. Right. All right, so let's adjourn at 1053. Okay. Thank you.